a memorial to the father of the nation in the small village where he was born, Bartholomew Boganda, killed in a plane crash in 1959 on the eve of independence and mourned by his people ever since. He was the Catholic priest who campaigned for freedom from the French. He could have been a giant of African liberation, an equal to Congo's Lumumba or Ghana's Nkrumah, if not for his premature and tragic death. In the village, the deputy mayor remembers Buganda and wonders where things went wrong for this country. If Buganda could see what's happening here now, the desolation, the criminality, it would hurt him. Old people are hiding in the bush. It makes no sense. He didn't like violence. The capital, Bongi, pays homage to Boganda. His reputation towers above that of other leaders, like the notorious dictator Jean Bedel Bokassa. And the flag he designed in the 1950s is still the national flag today. We'll never really know what sort of president Boganda might have been, but we do know that all those who came after him failed in different ways and this has helped protect his aura. It's the myth, if you like, of what might have been for the Central African Republic. An historian takes me to the National Museum, but it's locked up, and from what we can see through the windows, it has been looted. If there are lessons this country can learn from its past, we won't find them here. We still ask, why did Boganda die prematurely? This question preoccupies Central Africans. We regret his death. If only he had lived 10 more years, we would not be in this situation today. In the village, the deputy mayor wants me to see Boganda's private papers, or what's left of them. The Muslim Selika militia burnt them. He doesn't know why. History destroyed, the present in ruins. The ghosts of the past can't rescue the Central African Republic. Its people need new heroes. Barnaby Phillips, Al Jazeera in the Central African Republic.